Say you want it feature bed You write books, film, song, I think there's a with end The way you work, really Then my fear respect it, my friend Nah, I beg nobody, no Hello everyone, J Mullings from Rent Mirror here, aka Wicked Penman. Please like, comment, follow, subscribe, all of that good stuff. Share it with your friends, your family, your colleagues, even your worst enemy if you feel like it. I <laughs> uh, wanted to also say season's greetings to everyone. I know we're coming to the end of 2020 now and I really want you to have a great time with your family and your loved ones. And even if it's just the memory of family and loved ones who can't be with us this year, then Please hold on to that and hold that dear. Okay. Um, in the name of full disclosure, all my videos for this month uh, will feature product placement. I'm not being paid to say anything by Panasonic, but I do have two Panasonic cameras that I will be using. One is my GH5S, which I'm currently filming on. And this one, which is the G, sorry, G which is the Lumix S5, which Panasonic has lent to me. They don't have any power to edit my videos or to stop me from saying anything I want to say about these products. So, but it's just to obviously keep everything on the up and up to let you know that I was given this to use. It's a loan, so it's not mine, it doesn't belong to me. The video that I shot on this previously was kind of giving my first impressions of the S5 and I've now tried to replace it with my GH5S, which is what we're currently filming on. And I've had a few extra thoughts just regarding the differences between them. One of the things I did notice, this is a small thing of course, but I did notice that is this, where the screen is, the, you know, the flip out screen, which has the same, it's the same size, does pretty much the same thing. It flips in either direction. You can kind of customize it how you want. However, because there's no clearance underneath the camera. This is such a random thing I know, but I just noticed it. There's no clearance underneath the camera. If you mount this on certain certain plates that have like, so for instance, on my, I have a Manfredo tripod. It's a pretty decent one. It has a, a rubber, a rubber connector or whatever it is, like a little thing that you flip up to change the connection so you can go from quarter inch to the other size. But that rubber thing stops this from flipping out. Yeah, <laughs> it catches on it because there's no... Another is the, the body of this sort of reminds me of... Uh, my friend has a Fujifilm camera and the body, the construction of it, you know, the kind of the, the profile of it is the same. Um, so it, it does feel a lot less like it, it's not as nice to hold on to as the GH5S is, but I think this is something obviously you get used to. I feel like it's, this is something you could drop. I feel like it'd be easier to just accidentally drop this. So you're going to want to, you know, connect your, you, that's what you got these for. And then so you put it around your neck, make sure it doesn't fall. But personally, I like my cameras to kind of be free form. I liked having them like this. I don't usually wear those things around my neck. Just, just not really my style. I did notice another, uh, well, the GH5S has more buttons, but yeah, this has less buttons than the GH5S does. And one thing they did, which was quite clever, is they combined this shutter button here at the front. The, this one that you can kind of squeeze to control, even though, like with this that I'm doing now, I normally use, as much as I can, I try to use an intervalometer. I don't really like pressing the shutter because it introduces little bits of shake and on something like the GH5S, which doesn't have inbuilt stabilization, that shake can ruin picture. Well, picture mostly, it doesn't really matter so much with video, depending on the frame rate. So they've had, they've got the shutter button here and then they've got like the wheel, this little selector wheel. So they've made it one thing, whereas on the GH5S, you have a button here and then you have the wheel beneath it. So I can see how they've kind of refined the design. Uh, this, this selection wheel is pretty much the same with all the modes on it. It has, it has another mode or two that that's not present on my GH5S, the S and Q mode. Uh, so that's not on the GH5S. So that's, um, something I, I did notice. There is inbuilt stabilization in this, but what's actually good about this is 
there's no crop when you turn it on. So the lens that I'm using, which is my Sigma, what is it, the 18 to 50 or 17 to 50, it does have stabilization on it, but when you switch it on, it crops into the picture, which, yeah. So to get, to make this look this, uh, similar in, in terms of framing to this camera, I've had to actually move my tripod back a few paces, move the lights slightly forward a bit more because where it was before was just, yeah, I'd have hot zones all over here. It won't look good. So immediately this is telling me that this is actually a better camera. Yeah, it pains me to say it. I was hoping they would be identical and there'd be nothing to justify moving from one to the other. This is actually a better camera. Um, and obviously the lens will, will be, um, is slightly different. This is a zoom lens, a 24 to 105. That one has a shorter range, but they're similar in terms of how much you need them to protrude to get 50 milliliters, uh, millimeters. So for all intents and purposes, this is the, the side by side test or the testing of one to the other is pretty, it's pretty comprehensive. It's pretty... again, like I said, one of the, the thing that I did notice, and I said this in, in my first, my first, um, my first impression video is the mini HDMI, which is a little annoying, but I've ordered one, so I'm going to be able to plug it into my external recorder and get the full, you know, I'd be able to then do a, a full comparison where, I'm, where it's like for like, setting for setting. So that will be interesting. What I do like about this one is you've got a charging, so you can use like a USB charge. So um, I think this is a USB-C connection. You can use an external battery to plug into this. So while it's running, instead of using your battery first, it will use the external battery first and keep your, or I guess it will also charge the battery if the battery is low and use the juice from the external to keep it running. So you've got longer runtime potentially with this. So that's kind of cool because I don't know. My GH5S doesn't do that. Yes, this, <laughs> this is another little thing I did notice actually. The remote, so where you'd plug the interferometer, I'd show it to you, but well, it's on top of that. Um, but this is the remote for it. You know, um, you put one side in into your camera and this functions as a, a wireless shutter. So you press this and, or you can set up a time lapse from here so on and so forth. The idea is you just press a button, it does it for you. So you're not getting shake on your camera. So right, to free up this little, um, the connection for the remote control to go here. Again, may need pictures for this. So apologies if you can't see it right now, I'll show it to you in an image. It's quite easy to free this up, right? Especially if this was in a cage, like you can literally put a fingernail in here, bam, minimum of effort, lift it out. The one on the GH5S is an absolute pain in the backside to get out don't know why they made it the way they did but i'm glad they've addressed it they've made like a pronounced yeah you can literally just yeah go in and out easy whereas i've got a cage on my on my gh5s so it's it's even tougher to get out how did i even get it out in the end i have to use something that can kind of go underneath it and oh this this is very very simple i can tell they tried to make this ergonomic i just feel like maybe this could stretch out slightly more so that you feel like you've got more of a secure hold on the camera but again i don't know i think that's that's maybe a small a small nitpick aside from that um so far so good like i said i want to see how it responds to photography uh i'll do side by side again now that i've kind of seen the, the kind of crop factor I'm having to overcome with my camera, as opposed to this, I can I can immediately tell that it, so this is a very, it seems to be a very good, it produces a very good picture. The way it handles light is a lot more clever. Uh, I'm using the same profile. So normally I would shoot either natural or log, but there is a new profile that I've been trying called uh, Cinema D. I use, I'm using it on on a GH5S, but this one has Cinema D2. This handles light a lot nicer. It's a lot nicer. So again, I'll be interesting to, interested to see the difference, the differences, I should say. 
And then when I get the, the mini USB connector, I'll be shooting in log. So once again, I can fully tell the difference between one or the other and see if, um, to really see where the difference in, in color science is. Uh, the hot shoe at the top, that's where you put, that's where I put my intervalometer, but you could put other things on here potentially. Put a flash on here. You could put, um, you could put, if you've got, if you record sound directly into the camera, you can put your microphone on here. Uh, you've got another mic jack here on the side. Headphone jack if you want to monitor sound. It's pretty, it's pretty, yeah, it's very compact. Like I said, they thought about where everything goes. And then this new battery, or new battery design, I should say. It's the same profile, because this will fit the GH5S. But it's got like this little, I don't know what this does specifically here. But what's cool about this is, um, when you put it into the charger, it tells you exactly how much percent charge is in there. It doesn't tell you how much time is remaining, which is really what you would most like to know, right? But it, I guess that's coming one day soon. But yeah, this is a, I feel like this has a, a higher, uh, my other battery is not to hand. It's charging at the moment. Otherwise I'd check it. I have a feeling this is a, a higher capacity battery. That and it took ages to charge this. So I'm hoping it's a higher capacity battery. But yeah, uh, the actual features of using it. There was something else that I, I noticed, but I can't figure out what that is right now. Oh, sorry, I can't remember, I should say. But as I use this more, I'll have more thoughts on kind of how it works and so on and so forth. But yeah, it's very... Going from the GH5S to this, would you, you would literally maybe have, a, like, what I'm going to have, a day or two of adjusting to it, and then you'd get used to it very quickly. I can, I can see that. I can see it's pretty much a camera you could just pick up. If you've used the other, the other Lumix, um, the other cameras in the Lumix series, you just pick this up and off you go kind of thing. But so far, yeah, so good. I am, I am impressed with this. And I didn't think I would be impressed. I thought it was going to be a situation of me going, eh, eh. Oh, and it, of course, there we go. That's what I meant to say. You can autofocus. This is built for autofocus more so than a GH5S, which is more of a manual focus camera. You're supposed to dial in everything yourself. It's more of a film. Yeah, it's a filmmaking camera, really and truly. This one feels like more of a, you know, straight down the middle. Half if you're a photographer, half if you're a filmmaker. So if you do one more than the other, you're not going to suffer for pick, for, from picking up a, an S5 as opposed to you had a choice between a GH5 and a GH5S at the time. The GH5 was more photography, not so much of a film camera. The GH5S was more of a film camera, not so much a photography camera, even though to a certain level, you're going to get very good results from the GH5S. So it kind of was more of the hybrid than the GH5. The GH5 didn't perform very well when it came to video, in my humble opinion. And that's why I didn't go with the GH5. I went with the GH5S. Even though there was a slight difference with this, I feel like with the S1, sorry, the S5, what am I talking about? The S5 is on the left, you got the S1 and then you got the S1H. And I feel like I feel like this is probably the strongest choice out of them. You're getting you're getting enough from the other two cameras in the series and you're getting it at the lowest price point. The only thing I would say is you're definitely going to want a cage. This is very slim, like, you know, um, low profile then, let's say that. And I, the danger I would feel with having this camera body is you may hands might slip, it might fall, it might, and it, I don't feel like this will take a battering very well. It won't. So I'd say you'd have to get a cage for this, but then that's, if you put, if you put two grand into a camera, you can, you can afford a cage, right? So that's, that's not really a concern, but yeah, I'm, I am very much looking forward to using this over the holiday season. Any excuse I can, I can get, 
So now that I've done an indoor test, the, the, the weather outside wasn't great today. So I, I decided to kind of keep it indoors. But yeah, I'm, I want to use this outdoors next. It's a shame it's like wintery, wintery. I was supposed to get this just before the autumn. But again, thank you to, to Panasonic for sending me the camera. Let me not make it all sound doom and gloom. I am impressed with this. I'm not easy to impress. I'm not easy to kind of scare off. So, you know, I, I even was one of those people that wasn't changing their phones every year. Like I kind of, at one point I just stopped and was like, well, what is the difference from this model to this model? And sometimes, you know, I, I prepared to skip a year to go to the year ahead and so on. So with this, the, this is pretty much the line, the S line of cameras come in the, in the aftermath of the G series. The G series was good, very good. I feel like they've refined it with these S series. And like I said, if I can get equivalent performance from this S5 that I would get from the GH5S, and it is improved, improved image quality. A few of the other things they refined. Like I said, this is this is annoying though, because like I said, this will snag on. If there's anything underneath on your on your um, on your plate, on your quick release plate, it's going to snag if you try and open. So it may be a thing of you mount and then you you have to have it. Oh, that's just yeah. You should have left a little space here. That and um. Oh yeah, I did notice this as well. I guess I guess if you have um actually I don't know. You'd probably have to this is a very specific connection size. You should have given the option of both. Maybe there is and it's just in the box. And obviously I'd, this is a lone a lone camera, so it didn't come with it. So um I had to kind of switch around the, the connectors on my quick release plate, which again takes five seconds, but you know, it, I would have hoped it would have the, the the bigger size screw would fit instead of the quarter inch but again small small things um what's this okay okay yeah that's fine i will yeah it'll be interesting to connect it to the tv look at some of the, the quality just just off the bat before i've graded anything or made any alterations just to kind of look at one next to the other I will look at whether you can actually can you live can you live stream with this. I have a feeling you can. And if I can, then I'll be doing that as well. Okay, you can you can load lots into here and so on and so forth. Okay, right, right, right. Time lapse settings. Yep, yep. Pre. This is pretty comprehensive everything you'd want in 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 the it gives you a lot of control a lot of control i will say that as well which you know again i think panasonic where panasonic is um strong is they make cameras and they make cameras for people who know what they're doing so if you're if you have if you have pro ambitions or you understand the technology it's available to you to kind of you know finesse and do what you like with it I think where, where the reason they're not held, it's probably held as the like the consensus number one is their autofocus technology is not the best. Even though like I said, I'm not an, I'm not an avid fan of of autofocus, so I'm kind of like meh, doesn't matter, you know. But it's like you know when it came to cars, I'm a BMW guy. Not really. Not really needing all this, this, this um, four-wheel drives. I, I can drive. I can handle a car. I feel like it's the same with this. Whereas, if you're someone that needs to pick up and go, but doesn't really understand the technology very well, you're going to go for Sony. Is probably where you're headed first. If you're photography, photography. If you're into photography and you're a photographer, you're probably going Fuji film. If you're somewhere in the middle of that. And again, you want to kind of pick up and go, you might go Canon. And those, you pick, the only reason for picking Panasonic again is because you understand how to use a camera and understand how to set it up to get the most out of it. I think that's pretty much the consensus amongst where Panasonic rates. And when they do decide to upgrade their autofocus and these kind of beginner level settings i think that's when they'll start making more inroads 
in terms of sales because more people will consider their cameras because they are very good. I do think Panasonic is very good. They've not failed me so far, so. Yeah. Again, I'm not calling this a review per se. I'm thinking of it more as an analysis and the more I use it, the more I'll have to share and report. This is just kind of like a, a, a first assessment. And then obviously the differences of going back and forth between the two cameras, between the GH5S and the Lumix S5. The, the low profile this is a ninja. <laughs> yeah. I would like to see how it operates with more, more lenses, I guess, but this 24 to 105 kit lens is, is pretty good. I have to say it's pretty good. I haven't, especially because I've got both of these lens, both of these lenses are, are shooting at 50 millimeters. I'll, I will try the 35 and see how I feel. Uh, cause I feel like I'll, I'll try my, my Sigma lens or my GH5S and I'll try the 35, um, millimeter focal depth on this and kind of see where we're at but yeah I know this has been quite long but <laughs> if you've managed to to stay through to the end I appreciate you please like comment subscribe and share enjoy the holiday season and I'm Jay Mullings from Written Mirror aka Wicked Penman you already know what it is I'm out <laughs>